Meta just gave us a glimpse into the future of mixed reality and VR, with two brand new headsets named Teramasu and Boba Free. These have just been unveiled and they are packed with cutting edge features that blow all current consumer headsets out of the water. Now these aren't just your usual leaks. They're not Puffin, Phoenix, or Loma, which we have extensively covered here on the Lordsy VR channel. These are internal research prototypes revealed by Meta at SIGGRAPH 2025, and they're setting the tone of what's to come next in the VR and mixed reality space. So what are they? Why do they matter? What's Meta's end goal? How will this shake up the industry? And what will the future of next generation Quest devices look like? Let's break it down. So what is Teramasu. Teramasu is a dessert. The, okay, okay, I'm not even. No, we're not going to do that. Teramasu is a next gen visual fidelity prototype built to try and pass what Meta likes to call the visual Turing test. And what this means is making virtual reality indistinguishable from the real world. The specs on this device are insane. Teramasu features 90 pixels per degree. That's 3.6 times more than the Quest 3. 1,400 nits of brightness. Again, 14 times more brighter than the Quest 3. It has dual micro OLED panels paired with custom glass lenses. It has local dimming and a full HDR experience, meaning the blacks are much deeper. Whites are searing and the colors are more vibrant. And an insane Unreal Engine 5 tech demo showcasing powered by DLSS free, truly next level rendering. But although this all sounds incredible, there are some trade-offs with technology like this. Firstly, the field of view is absolutely tiny at 33 degrees by 33 degrees. That's actually smaller than the original Rift DK1 kit. And the second big caveat is that it's really heavy and bulky. This is not a product to be sold to consumers right now. Consider it more that this technology can exist and as technology gets lighter, more affordable, or we get even more breakthroughs, this field of view can rise and the heaviness and bulkiness can be decreased. Picture it from the first Oculus device compared to what we have now with the Quest 3. I think the important takeaway of this device is that this is the clearest and sharpest VR headset ever shown. And this isn't a patent, this isn't a proof of concept. People are actually going to be trying this at SIGGRAPH 2025, with someone even saying it's like the first time you saw a 4K TV with HDR. It's one of those experiences that you will just never forget. I mean, if you compare this PPD to the Quest 3, which has 25, and I just reviewed the Pimax, which looks insanely good in clarity, and that is 35. Nearly tripling that for this device is actually insane. Moving on to the second headset, what is Boba Free? So where Tiramisu aims for realism and sharpness, Boba Free takes a different approach by focusing on something just as important, the field of view. So here's the specs for the Boba Free. It has a whopping 180 degree horizontal field of view and 120 vertical field of view. That is mind-blowingly good. This kind of technology is unheard of in the VR space, even with the higher-end devices. Now, there are some that we've seen that have featured about 210 degrees, but this is not even accessible to most of the public. So to actually be able to witness this and see it no longer as a proof of concept, but real living tech demo is incredible. I've always argued that the field of view is one of the, the most important things in VR. Having a wider field of view makes it more realistic instead of seeing squares on the outside lines of your eyes. And I mean, if you compare it to the Quest 3, it had 110 degrees and 96 vertical. Now this device has 4K by 4K each eye, which is higher than Quest 3's 2064 by 2008. Now this does have a 30 pixels per density, which of course the Teramisu blew this out of the water. But I mean, the Quest 3 has a pixel per density of 25, so it's still an increase. I also just reviewed the Pimax device, which has a whopping 35 pixels per degree, which which is also really impressive. The Boba Free uses pancake lenses and weighs 660 grams, which is lighter than the Quest 3 with an elite strap. Now Meta's goal here is peripheral persistence. That was very hard to say. You're not just looking at the world, you're looking inside the world. It covers 90% of humans' field of view. And the reason this is so important is because VR relies on total immersion. And the more immersion that we can produce for someone, the more the human interaction 
action feels realistic and human immersion heavily relies on peripheral awareness and most VR headsets on the market barely scratch the surface. So why is Meta showcasing this now? These aren't patterns, they're not renders, these are real working prototypes that people can go and test. At SIGGRAPH, Meta's Reality Lab's motto is demo or die. Ideas are meaningless unless they're built and tested. Teramasu and Boba Free show us two key innovations. One is clarity and realism for Teramasu and the other is immersion and scale for Boba Free. If we can eventually merge those two paths, that's what we're looking at for the future of VR and mixed reality. But Meta has so much competition right now in the VR space with Apple and ByteDance and Samsung and so many others getting into the space. This is Meta's way of showing that they are still leaders in the space. And even though that these aren't consumer ready products to be sold on shelves, the direct information itself that this is capable and what Meta is building shows that display stacking, lens materials, tracking solutions, DLSS, integration and FOV designs are Meta's strong point and what they're working on. With Meta saying, we're not just watching the market, we're defining what comes next. One negative thing to note about these devices is they are still a tethered experience. This type of tech requires heavy GPU lifting and requires a PC tethered experience. And they weren't built for motion controllers or hand tracking or comfort adjustments. This is just a visual demo to showcase that it works. But with the rate of technology's growth, chips are getting smarter and faster, smaller, and more efficient. The fact that the tech exists now means that we can innovate and see improvements later. So what does that mean for future Quest devices like the Quest 4 and the Quest Pro 2? Well, we've discussed a lot of the leaks and potential tech seen here on the channel, so you can go and watch any of those videos. But to give you a brief with this new information, the codenames Puffin, Phoenix, Oloma, we're likely to see higher pixels per density, improved pancake lens design, wider field of view targets, and maybe even DLSS, style rendering, which will give us higher resolution with less GPU strain. According to the leaks, Phoenix is targeted to 2026 to 2027, and the Quest 4 could be announced as early as this year to 2027. And although while none of these have actually been confirmed yet, these prototypes give us a blueprint, and they show that Meta is serious about dominating the next phase of VR. So whether you're dreaming of retina level clarity or ultra immersive field of view, Meta just gave us a peek behind the curtain of the future of VR and mixed reality. And I don't know about you, but I am super excited to see it and cover it here on the channel. So if you're excited for this type of stuff, make sure to subscribe or smash the like button for more content like this. I really appreciate all of you and your support. I hope you have a fantastic day and peace.